Hey everyone, welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Uh, I wanted to point out something to you guys. Uh, in one of the videos I made, I was talking about oiling points um, for things like the uh, the bushing shaft on the motor and the um, knee control bar. But there's one that is uh, super important. I actually showed you guys where I oiled. I don't know if I did. I, I actually had this off and I oiled the threads on this. This, of course, is a lock. It allows you to lock in your, your stitch length if you want. Uh, it is currently moving beautifully. And I think I showed you guys in, I did show you guys in the video, this one, this particular one, uh, moves wonderfully as well, right? So, now that we have, um, I've covered all those areas, I wanted to cover something else. It's probably the most important of all. This machine has what appears to be a, um, plastic or resin clutch knob that you use when you're going to wind bobbins. You have to disengage the drive shaft. Now, when I tried this one, remember, I, I actually, uh, it had the little little set screw I've since taken out, but I tried it, and as soon as I turned it, it let go, and it didn't fight with me, and I felt comfortable to keep turning, and here's why. Remember, I've talked to you guys about all these dials and levers and how the plastic is backed up behind on the other side of the machine by steel, and that steel can get can get stuck sometimes. Well, this this has got to be one of the most important of all. I, I just almost I was taking this off to uh, to to clean and lubricate, and I remembered this is extra important. It's always important, even when you have a steel or a, or a chrome uh, or nickel plated steel knob, but it's even more so here because you'll see steel on the threaded end that actually attaches to the drive shaft, which is also steel, but notice that it's embedded in a plastic knob. What do you suppose happens if this knob is stuck and you force it? You will end up damaging and stripping the plastic off of the knob, and that will really make, you're gonna have a really bad day if that happens, because then you're gonna to have to get another one or try to repair it. Remember, this is a piece, unlike some of the others I showed you, this piece is under stress when it's used. Now, what did I do? I came in, and well, there's several things, several ways you can do this. I'm just holding the camera here, guys. It's just easier for me to show you up close. You can put a couple of drops of oil on the threads themselves. You can also simply come in and put oil right here on the, on the threads of the drive shaft, okay? So now, and oh, by the way, you'll see that the little set screw for this also has its own, uh, it's like a, looks like a brass bushing with threads that allows the set screw to, to thread in. Same thing with the little set screw. Mine didn't fight with me this time, but sometimes they do. And you don't want to screw that up. This is an important part of the machine. Uh, I find that a lot of people who sew just get themselves a separate bobbin winding device instead of trying to, to set up bobbin winding on their machines, but it's up to you. Anyway, now that we have lubricated this, what does that mean? It means that the owner, when they go to use this, if they choose to wind bobbins, like with this, right, it's snug. You don't wrench this down like it was a lug nut on the wheel of a car. You notice I just turn it, and as it stops, I snug it, that's it. As soon as you get resistance, uh, and this is, you're going to have to go by feel. You'll have to kind of learn. You'll know, because if you don't tighten this enough, right, let's say I leave it a little loose, <clears throat> It will not engage with the drive shaft and your needle won't move. So if that ever happens to you, then, and of course be sure, don't forget, let's come back, let's back up a bit. Got ahead of myself here. Remember, there's a washer here. And this washer, by the way, has teeth. It has two teeth. And there, there, it goes in one way, guys, because the teeth angle out or up, right? Out towards you, right? If we look at the bottom, Notice that they're, they're, I don't know if this is going to show up in the light. They're actually not, they're kind of angled down a little bit. I don't know if that shows, right? That's the back side. So on the top side, the tide you should be seeing, it's kind of, uh, the, the little teeth are, are angled up towards you, and that's the side you want facing out. Some sewing machines do this the opposite. And just like I've shown you guys in other videos, we're going to find the two slots where those teeth go. And this big washer seats just like that, right? And it should stay. Be extra careful when you're putting the knob back. This happens to many of you who are new sewers or you're new to a vintage machine. And you go to take your, uh, you go to loosen your clutch knob 
and that washer pops off. And if it does, it'll still be hanging there, but it won't be seated and your machine will not work and you may not know why. <laughs> and you'll be, what is going on? And it's something literally that simple. Okay, so we're gonna put a little bit of oil on this. And this is not a normal oiling point. Every time you go to oil your machine, this is not something you should have to do. This is a overhaul restores oiling, right? This is something that may not have gotten service. When a machine goes in for regular service periodically, that's when this should be done, which is another reason to always ask your machine servicer what they did. You, you need to have more than just the term tune-up, overhaul. Ask them for an itemized list of what they did. There's nothing wrong with that. I provide this to all my clients so they know exactly, you know, when they get their, you know, their estimate and their total, this is what they're, this is what they're paying for. And it's a lot easier to pay when you know what you're getting, uh, I think, <clears throat> along with the photos I take and, and in this case, video. So this is uh, always important, even if it's metal, but when you have plastic surrounding that steel, be extra careful. What happens if you get one of these? This will happen on a necky very often. You'll get this and it won't loosen. You're gonna to have to be very careful about trying to get oil behind here if you can. Let me help if I put the camera there. You also will want to gently warm it. And I don't use a heat gun, that's too hot. Low setting on a hair dryer, maybe even a little space here, but you gotta watch it. You gotta be careful. Never get this super hot. You'll damage the plastic, you'll crack it or you'll melt it. But sometimes just a little bit of warmth will loosen old gummed oil and it'll help excuse me, it will help it release. But again, this is really, you know, it's just like this, right? When I was showing you guys, remember I was showing you how, I think I showed you how I had to adjust this. And by the way, now when I turn this, when I turn this piece, notice that this piece here, did you guys see this move? Let me get my pointer and you can see it up close. This piece here, actually moves it slides in in this housing let me get a better better shot of this this piece here slides inside of that okay it retracts when it comes across the texture of this watch you see that that's how it's supposed to function and it took a lot of work on my part to try to get this to move it was stuck okay it hadn't been moved in years You'll find that some areas of machines, the mechanisms, some are more vulnerable to getting frozen than others. I don't know if it's the tolerances, I don't know if it's the pressure of the springs or what. But anyway, that is now moving. It took a lot of coaxing. I think I did videos of that. Good gosh. Um, 